Hi guys and welcome back to the Free Space Port. Uh, in this episode, because we're uh, between acts at this point, I decided to just go back and look at the first act and some of the ships that we've uh, been involved in, just give you guys a bit of a breakdown of th what we've seen so far. In future what I'll do is splice these uh, images into the videos, but uh, that would take a bit too long at this point, and we've not really got too much to go over, so I think that uh, this is a little bit more efficient than trying to uh, go back and edit all my videos at this point. So uh, this is a bit of a catch-up video. Next time we will be back into uh, Act 2. I've already recorded, I think, four or five of the missions for Act 2. So uh, we will be able to get going pretty quickly from there. Anyway, it's on to the tech room where we will learn a bit more about the ships that we have both at our disposal and that are fighting against us. First up we have the Apollo, named after the Greek god of the sun and uh, it's a fairly decent ship overall. Um, it's a bit of a jack of all trades but early in the game when you don't have shields um, the extra little bit of hull hit points that it has and even after you've had shield, the extra shield that it has over some of the interceptor style craft mean that it's fairly useful up to, up to a point in the game. Uh, that point basically comes when uh, you need heavier weaponry on your ship and the Apollo just really can't uh, take that sort of weaponry. But overall, for early in the game, it's a really nice balance of maneuverability and firepower. So uh, I'd really recommend this early in the game. But as it comes into the late game, you're going to want something a little bit better. The Valkyrie is the kind of paper cannon of this, uh, of the GTA fighters. It's incredibly fast. Uh, its top speed, I don't think, is matched by pretty much anything early in the game. And uh, it's not got a bad loadout, actually. It's only uh, 20 units short on loadout of a uh, Apollo. So. It's not too bad in that regard. The only place where it falls down a bit is on the damage it can take. So, while it's excellent in a defensive role, shooting down bombers and uh, just space bombs that are attacking ships because it can get to them quickly, it's not so brilliant when you get into a bit of a furball because uh, it really can't take the damage when it starts coming in from all sides. And uh, the AI is particularly bad at piloting Valkyries and gets them killed pretty easily. So uh, just be careful when you are piloting a Valkyrie that you uh, don't overestimate how much damage it can take. The Athena Bomber I've got mixed uh, opinions on. Basically it's uh, a bomber that tries to be a fighter and actually fails at being both for me. Um, it can take a lot of damage, which is obviously something that's very good, and its speed's actually pretty good. It's comparable to an Apollo. Um, and obviously it carries quite a big secondary loadout, but where it falls down for being a bomber is that it can't actually carry bombs, which is a pretty big fall down when it's a bomber. Um, it also can't carry the advanced energy weapons you get later in the game, and it can't carry late game missiles either, so while it has a little bit of niche factor in that if you need to tank that extra bit of damage that it might be useful uh, it's generally not going to be much use to you later in the game however here's something that's not useful at any point in the game this piece of crap is the PVF Anubis which is uh, obviously taken from the Egyptian god of death which is uh, pretty appropriate because whoever gets into it is pretty much inviting death. Um, it rolls very little more than cannon fodder, it's got weaker hit points than a Valkyrie, no afterburners, no guns, um, it's basically only useful as a kamikaze ship and that's pretty much all I've got to say on it. It's pretty rubbish. However, not everything for Sudan is rubbish, and this is an example. It's the PVF Seth. It's the uh, Vasudan heavy attack fighter. The GTA don't actually get the equivalent until much later in the game. It's fairly small, so it's annoying to hit, 
but it's also got a lot of hit points and shields and uh, one thing that really stands out about this ship is the fact that the difference between its max speed and its afterburner is so huge so it can get massive bursts of speed out of seemingly nowhere and evade quite well add to the fact that it's got a pretty hefty load can mount pretty much any weapon on it at all apart from a heavy bomb it's uh, a really good all round ship its uh, name comes from Christian mythology, Seth was the third son of Adam and Eve behind Cain and Abel. He was born after Abel's murder by Cain and uh, essentially divine origin and a pretty good ship overall. Maybe the Vasudans were just having a good day when they invented the Seth because the uh, Osiris bomber isn't exactly their best effort either. Uh, named after the Egyptian god of death, Anubis was the uh, dog who guarded the gates and uh, Osiris was the actual god of the underworld. Um, this bomber doesn't have the payload to be a uh, severe threat and uh, it doesn't have the defences necessary to stop itself getting shot down. Um, if you're going to have a bomber that's going to be this slow it needs to pack a much more serious punch than this can. Um, not saying that it's not dangerous because it's still a bomber and pretty much all bombers are dangerous if they can carry heavy weapons but uh, it really doesn't carry enough for it to be a threat and it can be taken down fairly easily. Moving on to cruisers, we start with the GTA Fenris. Now, uh, I took a little bit of uh, time to dig up what and where the name came from and Fenris comes from Norse mythology, uh, you know, Thor and his hammer and all that, and uh, Femris is a monstrous wolf in Norse mythology, which makes a little bit of sense when you come and look at this ship, because despite its really thin hull armour, it actually packs a very big punch for this game. Um, obviously in uh, Free Space 2 things heat up a little bit more, but uh, in terms of actual ability to do damage to capital ships, the Femris is actually pretty good in Free Space 1. Um, its main weakness being the fact that it can't take any damage in return, unfortunately, but its uh, blob turrets are fairly damaging and its fusion mortar is pretty severe for a capital ship to have to deal with in this game. Um, so it's pretty well armed against capital ships, but it really is just fodder for fighter and bomber wings, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, if it had a bit more health, it might have been a, a really good ship. And speaking of more hit points, the GTC Leviathan. Um, the first ship in this game to be named after one of the four chiefs of hell. Leviathan, the great beast, the denizen of the deep, right hand of Satan himself. Um, bit strange that the GTA had used that monkey for a ship, but I suppose in uh, most people's mythology, Leviathan just simply means big, so we will uh, go with that. It's actually not as well armed against capital ships as a Fenris, but it just has a uh, monstrous amount of hit points for a cruiser, so we'll let it off with that. And the final GTA ship that we're going to look at, and certainly the most famous one, is the GTD Orion, named after the Greek hunter so great that Zeus placed a constellation among the stars. A uh, pretty big monster, it's got the least hit points of any destroyer in the game, but it's the uh, iconic destroyer for at least the GTA from Free Space. Uh, gonna be very hard to destroy without a uh, rather large amount of uh, firepower at your disposal. Pretty effective against capital ships and an awful lot of fighters to serve as defence against it being bombed into a balloon, so nice ship. However, the Vasudans have been at it again and this time it's the PVC Atten, named after the Egyptian god of the disk of the sun, an aspect of Ra. Unfortunately, he... Uh, didn't do his best job with this ship really, it's the Vasudan equivalent of a Fenris, 
but where the femoris is pretty much armed to the teeth for a cruiser, the Atten has pea shooters. Uh, the only thing it has going for it is that it's got a large amount of hit points. Aside from that, it can't really defend itself against cruisers, and it can't defend itself against fighters anyway, so really all it does is take up room in space. Um, not really a very good ship, probably the weakest cruiser in the game, so uh, hope one's not on your side. And now we move on to the Sheevan fighters. The uh, Sheevan fighters generally tend to be a little bit better than uh, what we're used to, and that certainly comes to the fore with the Basilisk. Um, all Sheevan fighters, at least in this game, I believe are named after legendary creatures. Uh, the Basilisk being the king of the serpent realm with... Uh, the ability to cause death through both its gaze and its incredibly venomous poison. Uh, fairly apt for this um, fighter, it's basically what a heavy fighter should be, except that it's a little bit slow. Aside from that, it's got a massive uh, shield output, it can really take quite a lot of damage. It's got very heavy weapons on it and can cause an awful lot of damage. Its uh, only real weakness aside from its speed is the fact that it doesn't have a big hull. So if you can break through one arc of its shields and get through to the hull, you can destroy these pretty quickly. Um, so later in the game when you do get weapons that can punch through shields quickly, they tend to be a uh, kill count pad and more than anything else. Moving to the other end of the spectrum with the Sheevans, at least it's a name that I won't have to explain. I'm pretty sure you all know what a Scorpion is. Uh, this is pretty much a recon scout. It's lightly armed, it's very manoeuvrable, and uh, has a powerful afterburner. So it can be a bit annoying, but uh, take them out at range with uh, Aspect Seat King missiles, and they're not really a huge threat. When you don't have aspect seeking missiles, they can be a bit of a pain to cotton on to, but when you get superior fighters, they're just fodder. And back to the mythological names, we actually have the first Sheevan bomber that we see. It's the SB Shaitan, which uh, in Islamic mythology is the name for Satan. So uh, apparently this is the king of the uh, king of hell, but. Uh, Obviously the King of Hell doesn't know what he's doing if that's the case because this is supposed to be a light bomber. However, the only thing that's bomberish about this uh, ship is are its shield capacity and its speed, i.e. slow. Apart from that, it's got less laser weapon firepower than a Scorpion and it's only got the same loadout capacity. The only thing that makes it unique is that it can carry the sheave and heavy bomb but it can only carry one or two of those at most, so uh, really if you've got these sort of uh, bombers attacking a destroyer, you can almost ignore them, they're just not a big enough threat to it, and uh, if you're in a mission where you're defending a destroyer, the uh, other Sheevan bombers are going to pose a much bigger threat. And finally we're going to end with the first Sheevan cruiser, the SC Kane. It's basically the Sheevan equivalent of the Fenris. It is obviously from the Cain and Abel storyline, the human who committed the first murder, murdering his brother Abel. Um, basically the Cain is superior to both the Fenris and the Atten due to the fact that it's got more hull strength than the Atten and it's got close to the firepower of the Fenris and is probably better at defending itself against fighters than both of them. Um, it's, it looks impressive but it's generally not. If you uh, pound ammunition into it, you don't even need bombs really. If you just throw uh, missiles and uh, primary fire at it, it'll go down pretty quickly. Uh, it does have a big brother that we're going to meet and that's not going to be something that we're going to find particularly pleasant, but for now the Kane's a very competent ship, it's certainly better than anything we've shown at the moment apart that isn't a destroyer. Uh, the Leviathan can probably go toe to toe with it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up here and uh, next time we'll go on with Act 2. So thanks very much for watching guys and uh, I will see you next time.